deploy both inside and outside sales person large distributors achieve operating economies uh, so these are the functions of distribution uh, sorry distributors having products readily available serving as manufacturer selling arm um, providing credit offering white product assortments delivering goods offering technical advice and meeting emergency requirement uh, so as I mentioned earlier, distributor does not only responsible for distributing your product to the customer. However, they take a lot of uh, roles as well. Uh, macam ni ada 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7. Selain daripada delivering goods ni, uh, ada 6 lagi responsibility of distributors. Okay. Uh, jangan ingat dia hanya distribute barang saja. No, ya. Yeah. Providing credit maksudnya adalah um, um, Providing credit ni it means that um, You just deliver the product to the customer first yeah? uh, Nanti uh, pembayaran daripada manufacturers to the distributor tu can be delayed yeah? uh, Kalau macam kita, kita pergi individual customer uh, We go to the shop, we buy immediately yeah, we pay immediately. Uh, tapi when you have distributors ni, you can allow them to pay in credit. Yeah, uh, and also the um, customer pun the same thing. Yeah, the customer will deal uh, sama ada dengan the customer pun will deal with the distributors or with the manufacturers directly. Tapi the customer pun can have certain uh, duration, certain time for them to pay. And they get the and services first. Okay, ada uh, bila individual customer, of course you kena bayar dulu baru dapat barang. Eh? Normally, okay. Uh, kalau nak bayar lambat pun, uh, there will be certain times lah. Eh? Uh, tapi for the business customers ni, they can pay within certain period. However, the product will reach them first. Okay, uh, yang lain tu, you you read by your own. Eh? Saya rasa you dah baca ni. Sepatutnya saya boleh tanya you lebih. Okay, um, next one is services provided by distributors. Uh, these are all the services provided at the supply chain and inventory management. Uh, sometimes the di distributors also have the uh, factory where they um, allow for inventory yeah, untuk simpan barang sebelum barang itu diberi kepada customer. Eh? Automatic replenishment, product assembly, implant stores and also design services. Uh, so they are very customized lah basically yeah, for the distributors. So the manufacturers also allow distributors to do this job eh, before the product being distributed to the customers. Okay, classification of distributors. We have general line distributors, specialists and also combination house. General line you carry lots of products. Yeah? Kalau specialist ni, the distributors only carry a very focused product saja. Yeah? Very specialist lah. Sebab tu dia namakan specialist. Dia bukan extensive. Yeah? So, very selected product that they carry. Okay. Oh, sorry. And then combination house ni, they do both. Yeah? Adanya general, general line distributors and also specialist. For, for combination house distributors. I do do it was Okay, next one, choosing a distributor. Uh, macam mana the businesses or the manufacturers uh, when they decide to have intermediaries, macam mana dia nak choose, eh? macam mana dia nak select the distributors. So the selection of distributors, it depends on the manufacturer's requirements and the needs of target customer segment. Uh, macam tadi lah saya mention ya. Yeah? So um, when you have lots and lots of uh, segments for businesses and they are um, located at a different area, jadi uh, pemilihan distributor tu sometimes based on geographic location ya. Yeah? Sometimes based on um, the financing that they can give and so on and so forth. So the manufacturers akan ada certain criteria and requirements uh, being laid out for them uh, to fulfill before they choose a distributor. Okay, now because everyone is using the electronic or the technology, jadi to simplify the work, um, everyone go for 
uh, electronic. Yeah, macam saya, macam we discussed last time that we have e procurement. Uh, so all of those things you don't have to see face to face. You don't go face to face with the distributors. You just can collect um, remotely and online and using online lah. Uh, sebab tu dipanggil e e e tu uh, refer kepada electronic. Okay, manufacturers pula, they work independently. Yeah? Represent several companies in the same geographic area. Sell non-competing but complementary products. Uh, complementary, non-competing but complementary product. Have expert product knowledge combined with a need, keen, sorry, with a keen understanding of the markets and customer needs. Give the business marketer more control as the firm maintains title and possession of the goods. So manufacturers ni dia lebih besar lah role dia as compared to the distributor study. Yeah? Okay. Act as a manufacturer selling arm, offers technical advice, are paid a commission on sales, develop their field experience while working as salesperson for manufacturers. Uh, basically the role of the manufacturers ni is a even bigger and larger because um, in size pun manufacturers is bigger than the distributors. Jadi the functions dia tu lebih besar lah as compared to the distributor tadi. Eh? Uh, need for manufacturers representative. Uh, sometimes because the manufacturers serving a larger market, they also require for a representative for them. Eh? Okay. Any question? Ke tidur dah semua orang? Ada soalan tak? Baru 30 minit. Kau semua ni pergi tengok Netflix ke apa? Uh, that's why lah I don't like online classes ni. Nanti saya bercakap seorang. Okay, next week ada account ke tak ada account ke kita buat kat kelas ya. Saya tak suka lah like this. Kalau macam ni baik you all baca sendiri je. Tak payah datang kelas.
Alright, so we continue. Saya rasa saya nak habiskan chapter 10 sajalah. Chapter 11, 12, you baca sendirilah. Right? Okay, different market segment require different marketing structure, channel structure. Okay, uh, differences in purchase behavior. What are the factors influencing the choice of intermediaries? There are three factors, oh sorry, two factors that influence the choice of intermediaries. Different market segments require different channel structure. Eh? Different in purchase behavior uh, as usual because of differences in purchase behavior of the business customer. So are you required to have the um, a different kind of intermediaries? Yeah? You need to appoint a different type of intermediaries for your um, businesses. Okay, so the channels design the dynamic process of developing new channels where non existed and modifying existing channels. This one, <clears throat> okay, channel design is how do you design your channel which involves the channel structure. Uh, channel structure, as I mentioned, uh, you need to have people who are responsible for things, yeah, available in the market. Uh, sorry, um, available to make sure that your, your product is being distributed uh, correctly to your customers and everything. Yeah? Okay, what else? Channel structure, it refers to the underlying framework, uh, number of channel levels, number of and types of intermediaries, linkages among channel members. Okay, so this one is the example of channel structure lah, uh, like this, yeah? <coughs> So, ini adalah contoh channel structure tadi. Uh, so, how many manufacturers representative you have? Yeah? How many distributors you have? And each of these distributors ni, they are serving which uh, segment and so on and so forth. Uh, so, inilah kita panggil structure tadi. Okay. Mm, Alright. Kemudian, what else? Channel administration process. How do you process the administration of the channel? Selecting good channel participants and making sure that all tasks and obligations are assigned and understood. Yeah? Motivating members to perform tasks necessary to achieve channel objective. Controlling inter-channel conflict and also controlling and evaluating performance. Uh, so how do you administer? administer yeah? the channel process uh, macam mana you nak manage lah basically how are you going to manage the process of the uh, channel members yeah uh, so macam mana kita nak manage is we must make sure we are able to control the conflict if there is conflict in the cha in in channel members that in channel structure just now eh? uh, and also you need to control and evaluate the performance of your channel member Right, selection of channel members. Um, it is an ongoing process. Why it is an ongoing process? Because businesses is um, require all the channel members to be active. Yeah. Uh, so kalau channel member you passive macam you ni lah tak menjawab so alan saya tanya pun tak ada orang nak jawab. So you are very, you are very passive. So the chances of you to be kicked out from the channel member too is very high. Yeah. It's that responsive. Okay, how do you motivate the channel members? Is by giving them training, uh, improving communication, uh, asking feedbacks, and so on and so forth. Uh, these are all the uh, the ways, yeah, the ways for you to motivate your channel members. Okay. All right, what else? Uh, ways to control conflict. Okay, so there will be a conflict in the organization. Uh, kenapa adanya conflict? Because conflict ni um, arises due to the uh, unsatisfaction uh, feelings towards one another lah basically. Eh? Ataupun because they don't agree on certain things. So there will be conflict. Mm. And how do we manage the conflict? We manage the conflict by um, goal setting. Yeah? We set the goals and everyone must um, uh, know the goal. Uh, it is uh, well known by the channel members of all the goals. And also you need to be able to cooperate with one another basically. Yeah? 
And another thing to manage um, the channel members to avoid the conflict is to uh, build the trust and also the commitment. Yeah? So everyone must know their own responsibility and they have to commit to their responsibility. Uh, bukan hanya responsibility ini very important for the businesses, but responsibility is also very important for us as human being. Yeah? And also for us um, as a Muslim, yeah? because at the end of the day, we are going to be evaluated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Apa yang telah kita buat and what have we done, whether we breach the trust, whether we are not committed, we are given the responsibility, but we do not are uh, responsible for it and so on and so forth. So how do we manage ourselves is also very important in how do we managing the businesses at large. All right. Okay, any question? So kita dah habis dah chapter 10. Any question? Okay. Oh, no, tak ada, doktor. Okay. All right. So saya tak sambunglah chapter 11 and 12. Boleh you baca sendiri? Hey, hmm? Boleh doktor. Okay. Boleh. So, uh, okay. Alright, very good. So next week kita hanya akan concentrate chapter 13 and 14 saja. Okay. Uh, sebab tu saya tak suka ni kelas-kelas uh, online ni. Nanti saya cakap sorang macam alien saja. Okay, so you have two hours left. One hour spent for chapter 11, one hour spent for chapter 12. I see you again next week, inshallah, and there will be no more online classes. Ada aircon ke, tak ada aircon ke, kita kena buat juga physical class. Alright? Okay, not only you yang rasa panas, saya pun panas juga eh. Uh, so bring lah whatever kipas if you have to the class. Okay, so thank you so much. For coming to the class, okay, saya belum ambil attendance ni. I need to take the attendance. Okay, so thank you and Assalamualaikum. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor.